Uh, today, I'm going to talk about somebody else's video. I don't do this a lot. I try not to. Um, mostly because it, it kind of reeks of old school YouTube drama videos, and I don't want to do that. Uh, but in this case, what I want to talk about is so directly tied to this video that I saw uh, that I, I've, I've got to bring it up and I've got to show you guys what exactly I'm talking about. And I will put a link in the, in the description. I will go to that extra effort just just for you. Um, it's a video by a, a channel called Deficient Master, uh, which I had not seen before. Uh, this video was linked in one of the Discord servers that I'm in and I watched it. And, uh, here's the thing. It's a really entertaining video. Actually, it's very well done, well written, well, uh, uh, well spoken, uh, very well edited. Uh, it's just a really well done video. I'm probably going to end up watching more of this channel just because like he clearly does high quality videos, despite the fact that in this specific one, I think his point is misguided at the least and outright wrong at the worst. So what does he say? Uh, he, may, he tries to make the argument that character builds and optimization hurt the ability to roleplay, uh, and they kind of ruin the game a bit. Okay, so there's a couple of things going on here. Uh, first off, there's the element of how, like, when you first start into a game, you don't really know what you're doing, and so there's an element of discovery. You don't have a build because you don't know what a build should look like. Um, you kind of pick stuff, like, not quite at random, but without regard for, uh, like, a, a robust decision-making system because you don't know what a good option looks like. So you don't have a build. Over time, you get better at the game. You get more familiar at, with it, and you start to understand what makes a really good feature, and you start to pick those options. Uh, and then you have a build. Uh, this doesn't hurt roleplay. Um, but what, what he, what he talks about is issues where, uh, if you specialize in a thing, uh, the example, uh, he gives is, uh, if you have like, you know, sharpshooter crossbow expert, so you are using a crossbow and that is your, uh, choice of specialized interaction with the game world is to shoot things with crossbows really well. Um, and then you run into a situation where you may have a, a choice of different ways to interact. You know, do you, uh, uh, do you take this like improvised action? Do you go and like, you know, punch someone in the face or no, you're going to shoot someone with a crossbow. You're going to shoot someone with a crossbow because that's what your character is specialized to do. And so everything else, all your other options feel bad by comparison because they're not going to be something you've specialized in. And so like, they're at best going to be default options instead of the specialized option. And at worst, they're going to be lower than the default options because they're an improvised option. Improvised options are always worse than default options. Uh, that is to say that uh, rules for doing things that the that the, the core rules do not cover should should, rightfully, always be not quite as good as the default options to prevent them from just becoming default options um, or, or overshadowing the default options. Um, and certainly it should never be better than specialized options or else there's never a reason to specialize in anything. So there's a couple of logical issues going on here. One, the character has specialized in a particular type of interaction, that is shooting things with crossbows. That means that the player wants to do that. Uh, and the game does facilitate being really good at doing that. And so if that can solve a problem, then that's how the player has chosen to want to solve the problem. The other thing is that being specialized in using a crossbow doesn't make the other options invalid. It doesn't actually make you worse at doing anything else. It just makes them worse by comparison. Um, and so it's not the build... It's not character optimization that is making those options bad. It's the fact that character optimization in this game really pushes you to do one specific thing over and over again. And that is an issue in 5th edition. Uh, it's an issue in 4th edition, actually, uh, to, to an extent. Actually, to a much lesser extent. Because real character optimization in 5th edition is optimizing to overcome challenges in the most direct, easiest, efficient, and safest way possible. Uh, because that is largely what the game is about, is overcoming obstacles 
as efficiently and safely and directly as possible uh, and, and reliably. Whereas, like, in 4th edition, you do specialize and you do uh, uh, optimize toward overcoming obstacles more easily, but you still have to fundamentally interact with the game. You're still playing the same game. It's just gotten easier. Whereas in 5th edition, if you optimize well, you aren't really playing the same game. Uh, you are just fully bypassing issues and nullifying enemies. Uh... Uh, and, and that becomes more and more prominent as the game goes on. But the idea that character optimization hurts roleplay is putting the blame on players for something that is not the player's fault. A, a, your typical player, be it power gamer, optimizer, what have you, um, uh, which is to say someone who isn't approaching the game from a hyper casual standpoint you know because like your your very casual player is probably not not ever going to engage with the game in terms of like exploring options and making decisions making a build all right and we are discussing what happens when you make a build so players who make a build are optimizers they are power gamers they are uh they are looking for a very specific experience and they are looking to master the system to the point that they are able to engineer that experience for themselves. But what experience does the game encourage? It's overcoming obstacles as efficiently and safely and reliably as possible. That's D&D's way of optimizing. There really isn't much outside of that because D&D largely ignores other types of gameplay. It is all about present obstacle, present challenge, present danger, present threat, and then deal with it. That is D&D's gameplay cycle. And there may be little uh, uh, role-playing moments in between, but that's primarily what the game is about. Uh, most of the most other scenes are not covered by the rules. They're, they're sort of extra role-playing moments that are tacked on to connect these scenes in a way that makes logical sense. Compare this to other games, and you will see the procedural difference in how these games are designed and how character optimization works. I'm going to bring up my old favorite, Blades in the Dark. In Blades in the Dark, no matter how much you optimize your character, you are still incentivized to take risks, to do foolish things, and to... Uh, uh, <laughs> disregard good sense. So you are still engaging with the game as it is meant to play. You're still creating these cool story moments where you do something that's absolutely wild. Now, because you're optimized, you're probably going to come out all right. You're probably not going to get punished as much as someone who is less optimized or even less advanced. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Blades of the Dark is one of those games where the campaign can only go on so long because player characters get so powerful that it becomes difficult to actually leverage meaningful consequences against them. But we're not talking about high-level characters. We're talking about just well-built characters of, you know, moderate experience uh, or even low experience. But you're, you're going to be doing things well, and maybe you're going to get by on the skin of your teeth. You're more likely to... To, to come out of it relatively unscathed because you are well built and you know how to operate your character in a way that is uh, uh, optimal for the system. But you're still doing these like cool, sick tricks. You're getting yourself into trouble and that's narratively interesting. You know, the game is designed so that no matter how optimal your character is built, you're still doing things that create the cool story moments. Second example. Legend of the Five Rings. I talk about this shit all the time. Legend of the Five Rings is set up in such a way that optimal characters are those who interact with the story a lot. They have the emotional story beats. They have relationships to other characters that they explore. They're going to do things that interact with their, their perks, their, their advantages, and their disadvantages. The game is set up to create drama, and so an optimized character creates a lot of drama. And it creates the kinds of story moments that you're playing the game to see, and the kinds of story moments that Deficient Master probably wants to see in his D&D games. The thing is, D&D is not engineered to create those system, those moments. You can create those moments. But I was reflecting on it today, and I realized that I've never had a moment in any of my D&D games as a player or as a DM, 
where like I shed a tear for the, the emotional impact of a scene or a character moment or anything like that. It's never happened. Whereas I have, I have wept multiple times for my Legend of the Five Rings campaign because the, the character moments are so good. And it's not because of like a higher caliber of care of player. Like, you know, these players are, they're good players. I like the, or I like my players, but like, they're, they're, they're not like better role players than I play with D&D. Oftentimes it's the same people. The difference is that the game system itself can encourage different kinds of uh, uh, behaviors from player players uh, in order to create the experiences that the game is meant to create. And D&D is meant to create an experience where you are presented with challenge and you overcome challenge. And then you are presented with challenge and you overcome challenge. That's the gameplay loop. Every game has a gameplay loop. I'm not saying like the loop is a bad thing, but like it's a very particular kind of loop. And it's one that is not generally charged with good story. It's, it's, it's literally just like resource management, attrition, uh, and you can pepper some story in there, but the game is not going to do that for you. Whereas in a lot of other camp, uh, other uh, role playing games, the system is designed to push players towards doing cool things, towards creating story, creating drama, having the kinds of interactions that, as a, a game master, I'm going to just I'm shutting up and I'm watching. Like I am entertained by my players doing the things that the game is telling them they should do because they get XP for it or because they gain resources from it or like they are their characters are mechanically rewarded for doing these things that are, they are not rewarded for in D&D. And so there's no reason to do it and there's no mechanic to interact with for these kinds of story moments. So anyways, I wanted to say that D&D is not set up to create stories. And that's why when you optimize in D&D, you actually stop interacting with the game as intended, especially in, in 5th edition at least. In 4th edition, literally, your numbers are just bigger. And so you end up, like, it ends up making the fight easier. And so the DM can ramp up the difficulty and to, to compensate. And that's largely the same thing. You're not going to notice a different kind of gameplay in 4th edition. In 5th edition, you will notice a different kind of gameplay because optimized characters approach the game from a very different perspective than you know, unoptimized characters. I don't know why I always have trouble <laughs> with that verb or that adjective. Anyways, um, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, I, think, I think Deficient Master's conclusions are wrong. Uh, and he is blaming players for things that the game itself fails to do. Uh, if by mastering the game, it doesn't provide the experience that you want, it is the game that is failing you. Uh, and if you have to not know what you're doing to play the game well, then that's, uh, that's a bad game. Like, like, we all kind of have this nostalgia for, like, the discovery period of a new game, but you have to keep playing new games to have that. You're never going to have that with a game long term. So, I disagree with Deficient Master's points, but the video is very entertaining, and so I do actually recommend that you check it out. Uh, I, I would like to support that kind of content creator, uh, even if I disagree with his approach. Uh, so yeah, that's my opinion on uh, character optimization and as as it pertains to interacting with the story and creating a better role-playing experience at the table. I think it's a D&D &D problem, not a character optimization in general problem.